How you doing? Good. Well, I keep this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Laura, it's okay if I take oh, this. Yeah, Ready? Good. Good evening, everyone. This is a meeting, the um, October 7 meeting of the Planning Board of the Village of Dobbs Ferry. We have eight items on our agenda tonight. I understand one will not be appearing, so we have seven items on our agenda tonight. Um, Item number one is to, first I'd like to have a resolution to open the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, adopt the minutes of the last meeting. No comments. The clerk got, to, got them to us yes. today and we appreciate no her, her diligence on that. And I, I have printed them and looked at them and they look fine. I have no comments. Same. All good. Okay. All right. I would move their adoption. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Item number three on our agenda, we're on number two actually, um, 156 Palisade Street, continuation of public hearing for site plan approval for proposed new multifamily building. I would move that we open the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank Aye. you. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, Corey Salomon from Zaron and Steinmetz here tonight on behalf of 156 Palisade Street, LLC. Uh, here with me this evening are Michael Lang, the principal of uh, 156 Palisade and Christine Griffin, project architect. As you'll recall, we were before you back in September 9th and we presented two alternatives to you at that meeting. The first alternative wasn't really viable due to site constraints. Um, the second alternative we presented on a more schematic level uh, was a approximately 8,700 square foot building, three stories with four units. Um, based on our discussions, it seemed like your board was uh, relatively happy with that alternative. We went and we had engineering prepared, made that submission. So we're here to you, before you tonight to continue that discussion. And I'm gonna turn it over to Christine in a minute to go through the plans, but just procedurally, as the chairman said, we're continuing the public hearing. Um, in reading Valerie's memo today, I noted that there was no EAF or a coastal form submitted. So we will get that in in time for your next meeting uh, so we can move forward with uh, the secret Thank process. You. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Christina to run through the plans. Right. Good evening. I'm Christina Griffin, the architect. I'm also here with, um, well, uh, remotely, uh, Suzanne Levine is joining us on Zoom and she's just gonna help me uh, see through the slides. So, um we yeah here she is Hi, i'm sharing now so it appears <laughs> suzanne levine is a project designer also working on the project with me uh, and she's going to help us uh, help take us through the slides um <clears throat> tonight we're showing you a complete set of drawings uh, floor plans, elevations, site plan, based on the scheme that we discussed at the last meeting. Um, we've also developed the civil engineering drawings uh, and some 3D views. Uh, this is the front elevation of the building. Um, and um, that's just our cover sheet. So we're gonna go back to that in a little bit. Suzanne, uh, okay. This is our site plan. So. We've designed a building that will meet the zoning code and lot coverage, setbacks, impervious coverage, um, but we, but not in height. And that's because we're trying to reduce the amount of excavation into the site. This is a steep slope. We have a difference of about 15 feet from the center line of the front of the lot to the center line in the back. So. Building is brought towards. Ed, Ed is raising his hand. Yeah, I. You don't have the uh, sliding scale for the lot coverage, impervious coverage. 
you, I believe it's 49%. You have uh, required 60, which is prescriptive. <clears throat> so it, just to be correct, it's the height and the uh, impervious coverage. Actually, Ed, thank you for, for mentioning that. I'm sorry, but we actually, on our last submission, we didn't update the impervious coverage what we have, what we're showing you here is actually 44%. And that's what I thought the maximum was. Um, and we, we made a mistake when we submitted it. We kept it at 60. We had that originally. Okay. I, I'm, I'm looking have, at a different plan than the one that was on our documents here says 54%. Yes. That was okay. actually the previous scheme. Now we're at 44 and we'll make sure you have the correct drawings, but um, this is the air area of all the impervious surfaces on this scheme is 44%. Um, oh, thank you. Patio? Yes, okay. patio, the walls, the driveway and the walk in the front. But the coverage is conforming, right? The overall coverage. My understanding is that is the maximum, 44. And I'm not talking about impervious service, I'm about building coverage. Building coverage is actually 32.7, just slightly under 32.8, which is the sliding scale maximum. Right, good. Yeah. Um, and I think our planner noted that the frontage is sufficient to it. Uh, you need 87 feet and a, yeah, you have a sliding scale for the lot width too. The lot width is something that um, I think is hard for us to, for me to address. So but maybe width, you it wouldn't that, that be a pre-existing legal non-conforming? I mean, because I mean, obviously this lot was created long before this sliding scale was created, and so right. But I think you're well. Again, I was just highlighting things that I think that might need to be waived, and if you're increasing the number of units on site, then. You know, a lot of communities consider that as then something you're increasing the intensity. So therefore, you would need to have the variance. I, I understand that. But I mean, I would respectfully disagree and, and think that it would be. You know, well, I'm not, I, it was really Ed, who's the building yeah. inspector, who would make that final sure. determination. I'm just highlighting that these are things that don't meet the zoning current. Sure. And, and I would agree with that. Like I said, I think that's a pre-existing nonconformity. But. Again, if Ed made the decision that we would need a waiver from that because we're increasing the intensity I, on the site. I then... did not. <clears throat> okay. So the impervious coverage as I've calculated is 49.2% is uh, maximum. So uh, I, we can compare that uh, um, off meeting. So I think yes. you should go higher, Christine. I, I will. I. I just checked it before I came here, but we have been, um, the patio size, we're trying to make it modest and make sure that we, we want to meet the code in every way we can. The only reason why we are asking for a favor for height really has to do with the site we're working with and the difficulty and, um, pushing the building down to meet the maximum height. Right. Um, but Ed, I'll, I'll review that and uh, go over that again, but it is our intention. Um, and, and we're, and if you measured and, and it looks we're over, we'll make sure we're not. Um, but no, I I'm think saying, since we I'm submitted those could... drawings, we might've changed that patio. Right, plan. I'm looking at, I guess you changed the drawings since you submitted the, the most recent ones that Yes. We had scanned, but so, uh, but what I'm saying is that in this one you're showing on the screen tonight, you're uh, like 5% under, which is, you know, I'm saying you could have more impervious coverage. Okay. Um, you know, it, uh, we, we always scrambled to meet the deadline before the next meeting. So the one thing that we were we left out was impervious surfaces, but um, what if if that's the case we're under, that's where we want to be because we really don't want any kind of waiver for impervious. There's no need for it because I think we'll have a very comfortable patio space, get the driveway and the walk to work. So this plan is showing 
The building pushed towards the front, as we showed you last time. The setback to the main building is 10 feet. The prevailing front yard setback is seven feet four. The side yards are more than the minimum. On the right, we have 12 instead of 10 feet. We did that because of the concern of being close to the neighbor, even though 10 is a minimum. And then on the other side, we have 13 feet 10. Our rear yard uh, is required to be 25 feet, but we actually have 51 feet. So the building is pushed towards the front so that we can get a uh, light ventilation into the building around the sides and the back, and then have a very low retaining wall um, at, at the back of these um, outdoor spaces for each unit. It's only gonna be three feet, nine inches. And our design previously that had the building sunken down had um, two retaining walls that added up to nine feet. So uh, this is still a four unit building, 32.7% uh, lot coverage, just under the maximum. And um, all the setbacks are met. Uh, I'm going to go on now to the next slide. This is just, uh, yes, the garage plan. <clears throat> this is blowing it up. The garage plan is, just as before, we've added information and we're showing um, four spaces, handicap, one handicap space, recycling waste center, utility room down on this level. The garage does push back three feet eight beyond the floor above, but that's underground. Um, previously, we had a garage that had uh, seven spaces spaces we we can if we wanted the seven which is what's required for, for four units we have to go back into the hill um and we have plenty of space we can meet the setback to do that but we would have to um do more excavation so we wanted to ask for a waiver for the parking uh this is a section through the building and you can see that um, because of the way the building is situated in the hill, uh, we can come right out to grade with a low retaining wall in the back. In the front of the building, we can have a very gentle slope from the garage out to the uh, street. So uh, storm drainage works really well. Um, and the height of the center line of the sidewalk to the top of the parapet in the front of the building is 33 feet four to the top of the of the building the uppermost point is 40 feet four which is three feet four more than the maximum height to a flat roof you can also see in this section that we have set back the third floor 12 feet in plan it jogs but in each at each jog, it goes back 12 feet. Mm -hmm. Our ceiling heights are modest, nine feet to nine feet at the third floor. Uh, we have just a bulkhead for staircases uh, on the very top uh, to allow access to the roof for the top two units. I'd like to see the next slide, please. Here are our floor plans. Uh, we have two units on the first floor. On the left, we have a two bedroom, two bath, about 13, 60 square feet. On the right, we have a one bedroom, one and a half bath. These units are oriented so that they open up to patios and backyards on the rear. And then on our second floor, we have a, two duplexes, uh, the one on the left is 2,400 square feet, with three bedrooms, two, two and a half baths, and one on the right is 2,100 square feet. There is an elevator that provides handicap access up to the entrance of each unit. And then when you go into the townhouses, they have staircases going up to the roof. The outdoor space for the townhouses is, is provided by roof decks on the third floor. 
which brings us to that plan. This plan has a, uh, each of these townhouses have a, well, I call them the really duplexes. They have roof decks in the front, uh, assuming there may be a view there. Um, that's their outdoor space on the third floor. Um, there's a family room and a master bedroom on these floors. And then on the very top of the roof, we just have uh, bulkheads for stairs for each unit for access to the top. Next um, slide is just showing our initial uh, design of the front facade. The idea is that we would maintain the stone wall that goes down the sidewalk along the street, either rebuild it to match existing or save it somehow because it's a nice um, element on the street and have a cutout so that you would remove part of it so you could have a, a walk to the front door on the left and then the uh, garage door on the right. This facade has a main facade that's 33 feet six wide. And that is uh, nine feet in front of this other facade that's 17 feet four that recesses back. And it, the reason why it's recessed back is so there's enough space for a car in front to park while waiting for the door to open to the garage. Uh, there are bay windows and the top floor is set back 12 feet and is done in a different metal material with metal panel. Uh, at the very top, you're just seeing a railing, probably a glass railing for the top roof deck. Next um, slide, please. So, and we are looking at, you know, uh, simple cutout openings as, as you see in the street, brick um, veneer on the front facade, and as we turn around the building stucco, uh, this is just showing the jogs in the um, building at the very top, and there's roof, their trellises over the roof decks. Um, and this is, uh, this is just showing the section that shows the gentle um, en entrance, uh, you know, exit from out to the grade in the back. So um, because the building is high enough, now we can keep our windows above grade and um, have a, a very small retaining wall at the backyard. Next slide, Suzanne. It's a rear facade where you have the full, the full three floors that you can see. There'll be privacy um, fencing between the units and the yards. Uh, next slide. This is the, this is our, well, north, the other side of the elevation, which is just the flip side, similar treatment with brick in the front, stucco on the side and metal panel on top to break up the materials as you go up. Next slide, please. These are our color schemes. Um, we took a look at, uh, you know, what kind of colors and materials we're thinking of neutral grays and having uh, the entrance being a um, focal point of the building, um, having the parapet form the balcony above instead of any open railing, since that's not very that's seen on the street, so that those roof decks are tucked in behind the parapet. Um, next slide, please. This is our um, streetscape. Um, maybe we can go in close here to see. This is the proposed building as shown, uh, the second building in, and this is drawn in scale. And as you can see, the um, top of the building is, is similar to the tops of the buildings on left and right. And then the front facade is uh, kind of in line with the top of the fascia board of each of the buildings, right and left. Um, and you can see the relationship of this building with the other buildings on the street. Down below is our site context area map uh, showing the building in a purple color. Uh, showing the shape of the building, looking down at it. You can see the front yard is very similar to other front yards on the street and the setback. Um, 
this property has a nice amount of space on the side yards and space in the back, which uh, is, well, I guess the, the yards in the back are vary quite a bit on the street, but um, I guess there's a lot of variety, but uh, this is the relationship that we're, we have between this and the neighboring buildings. They're vary in shape and size and length. Next slide, please, Suzanne. Okay, I think um, before you go there, could you just show the, the board the uh, list of um, setbacks? Just wanna let them know that we uh, provided uh, a breakdown of the setbacks for each property. Uh, well, each of, uh, I think, uh, nine properties, we took an average to come up with the prevailing front yard setbacks. Uh, this is actually, um, some of the information has been taken from other research by other consultants. Next slide, please, Suzanne. The average is 7.14 on the, of these buildings on this side of the street. We also have an aerial view, just looking down at the building to show how the building fits within the neighborhood. And uh, I think we can show you, we have actually a link to a spin around view. Before we get there, this is a, a rendering uh, that shows a view taken from a pedestrian walking along the street. So if you're walking down Palisades, you would look up and you can see the top of that front wall of the two-story part of the building. And then you can just about see the trellises and the top of the third floor that is set back 12 feet from that front facade. And Suzanne, I don't know if yeah, you can- I'm gonna share, I'm gonna yeah, share the, uh, the model now. The, mo the model that shows uh, a view that can be turned around so you can get an idea of how the building fits on the street. The, the information is taken from Google Maps. Uh, the, the trees are very rough, but we hope that this helps to give you an idea of the scale of the building. I don't know if, she, if you can just slow down and go, it's, it's kind of, it's hard to control. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can share the link for you to look at on your own too, if you, it's easier. <laughs> that would be great. Um, if you want to see a certain view, just please let me know. Really sort of closer in on the three, on the buildings flanking. Yeah. I'm going to try and get down there. <laughs> but it distorts, I'm afraid, with the trees. We were but... trying to get the um, trees removed, more trees removed, so we wouldn't have, but we just couldn't get it in time for the meeting, but we're, we're working on it. I think, you know. This works best for context more than yeah. a detailed side-by-side -side comparison. Um, a little further away is a little, maybe a little better. Maybe we should land on the um, streetscape, Suzanne. Yeah, pull. Just to. Pull, pull up on the, land on the street, yeah. yeah. Try, I'll try. It's a little. I think that's very helpful because I think one of the, the things that we've been looking at and 
there have been comments from others is the proportion and how it fits into the neighborhood and so on. And I think this is very helpful in giving us a, a sense of that and other people a sense of that. Also, we tonight we also have the civil engineering drawings. We also submitted them, uh, the stormwater um, management design. Um, yeah, actually, leave it there. we can so, finish with that. So huh? that's the extent of our presentation. Yeah, no, I'm happy to, so I to think, take any questions. No, I mean, from my point of view, the good news is I think in terms of the overall massing and strategy for the site, we're finally there. Like as far as you know, pretty much. But I just want to. I want to. There's one thing that bugs me, and and you're going to hear it from. It's more of an AHRB issue than it is our issue, although since it might have massings, it might have some small massing implications, I'm gonna comment on it anyway. The idea of the, of the maximum, you know, there was this idea in the character guidelines that for a big building like this, it would be the sort of this primary mass, the forward one that you have, and that other, to the extent that it was bigger than that, other, the other things that were sort of attached to it would seem smaller, right? So, What's what's weird and about the way it's done here, and maybe it's just a matter of the fenestration on the setback piece, and maybe it's the lack of shadow on the elevations. If you go to the elevate, if you go to the just a straight on front elevation, right? It it doesn't look like there's a big A and a small B. It looks like there's A, B, A, right? The thing is symmetrical down the middle, which makes it harder to give this reading of one mass with something else attached to it. So one way to do, you know, so it, for me, what that means is that the setback piece has to be, should be treated somehow in a way that is not mirror symmetrical to the far left-hand side of the building. I don't know if that's just a fenestration thing, if it's like some of the difference in the materials, but it it right now it's it's basically a symmetrical building with one you know one one piece of it pushed back. In other words, you should, lose the idea that it's a one it, that there's one big one piece giant. with something else attached to it goes away because of the sort of A B like it's like dead center symmetrical, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that may just be an AHR, that may just be a, an AHRB kind of articulation issue, which I know and I know you'll hear this from Eric because he was with with Steve and with me working on these character guidelines. But I think what's fun, and you know, part of it is that you don't have a shadow line. I realize it's this is the sun's coming from the south, so you don't see the shadow that the part up near the street would cast on the volume to the back. So in terms of like the massing, the basic footprint, I think it's right. It's just that it's weird. It's funny for it to be <laughs> symmetrical, given this. You know what? I, I think you know what I mean, right? Well, you know, I always feel like a really good design evolves. So we're ready to keep going. And, yeah, and no, I'm, I'm, the, the, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm think, about, I'm about I good think news we're kind tonight. of looking I think at the, the shape basic of, yeah. thing is right. I'm just looking for, for that, you know, that kind of sense of it being this part A and a smaller part B, which by having everything exactly symmetrical, is kind of fighting that. So that's, I'm just giving you a heads up that I think that that's something that's worth working on, Cassandra the age we. And then the other thing is that in order, and this again is a, like an architectural, I think mostly an architectural treatment thing, uh, is whether or not the, the lobby area can somehow, to me still looks a little bit mean in the sense that it still looks like there's this kind of a plinth that the other three stories are sitting on. And to the extent, even though I know it's the stair that's behind those windows in the middle, right, primarily, um, if there was a way for the ground level there, what we're looking at right at the garage level where the entrance door is, if there was a way for that to be treated with a lot more glazing, even if it's the stair that you would be seeing somehow or 
that little window that's down by the garage being bigger, or maybe it's sort of the canopy, I don't know, but making the entrance look sort of more open to the sidewalk. More inviting. Somehow more transparent with the, the rest of the sidewalk. But I think, it, for me, the basic massing of the thing and the disposition on the site and elevations are right, finally, for me. I don't know how the other board members feel. Thank you. Yeah. Other comments? No, I would just echo Rob that I think we're on the right track. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, very much. For me, it's a, uh, I, I think I agree too. Um, the two parts of the building that are, that are forward, um, I'm just looking at the streetscape here with the buildings on either side. Mm -hmm. I'm just missing the reinforcement of the line above, I guess it's, it's would be the second floor that lines up with the porch to the building to the south. I mean, there is sort of a, a, a line of, I, I see that you've pretty much aligned the height of the windows, which I, I uh, commend you for. But uh, the way the porch on the building to the south and the elements on the building to the north sort of, there's some kind of a, a def Another definition line. right above the windows on the, it would be your second floor, right? Um, it's sort of this horizontal expression line thing. And yeah. the character guidelines is this, you can see it on the other buildings actually on this elevation that there's both the eave line, which you're gonna get at the parapet and the setback, but then there's also, there tends to be this other line more or less at the second floor level, which is often the top of a porch or yeah. some so, other. Now this is an AHRB thing. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, I just no, think no, a lot no, of no, care no, needs no, to be taken no, with no, the no, forward no, sections no, of that, no, of the building in relation no, to the other building, so. But other than that, I think you're there. It would be helpful if they go to the HRB yeah. before our next meeting. I was thinking that. I was thinking maybe yeah. now is a good time yeah. to actually go to the HRB, since I think there's a feeling on the board that the basic disposition of the big pieces is right, the stuff that we focus on primarily. Mm -hmm. I think probably it does make sense to go yeah. to the HRB so. now. Then when you come back at, at the next meeting, we could have a read from them. And I think it would eliminate some of the questions and comments, perhaps. No, like Seeing that's their job. <laughs> no, thank you. Any other comments, sir? Is it is this a public hearing still? It is a public hearing. Yeah. I'm sorry. Before we go to the public, sure. I just have a clarification yeah. on a couple of things. Yeah, sure. One, I just received an email with the EAF and the coastal form that was submitted in January of this year. Um, right, but it's not based off of this particular. So you so want revised? Yes. Form. That's okay, what so we'll, we'll submit revised ones for you then. Um, and then if we could just get some clarification um, from Mr. Manley with respect to the lot width, whether he's considering this a pre existing. The the frontage. Yes. Which, I mean, according to the sliding scale, it should be 80, right. 87, about 87 right. feet. Right. If, if, and that Ed might find it as a pre existing non conforming use. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, not use, sorry. Condition. Condition. Right. Condition. Thank you. So it's got a. Mr. Manley wants to chime in now or if he. I, now that we have you know, a, an acceptable plan, I will fully. Right. Bet the uh, zoning yeah, requirements, different. but I, I, I don't see it as we're creating a lot here. That's a pre-existing condition uh, in my first look at. So given that we're close, we're gonna give the revised documents. We could we have a resolution or are we not there yet? I'd be reluctant to do that yet until we go to the HRB and we see what comes out of it. I think it's close. I think it's about. I think you also need a lighting plan we'll and landscaping plan as well. Mm -hmm. That the board yeah, needs to board. review that yeah. too. All right, we'll get all that in. Yeah. yeah. And, okay. you. and you might want to ask the uh, oh, yeah. HRB to join your next meeting. I think um, that might be helpful. Yeah, well, well, let, yeah, let's, if uh, they could go to the HRB prior to our next meeting and then we'll see 
what the result of that is and see if it having a joint meeting would be uh, productive. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You know, it, it is a public hearing. I think we opened the public hearing. Um, is there anyone that wishes to speak on this? I didn't think so. Anybody online? <laughs> Anybody online? Uh, Nobody online. Okay. We've worn everyone out. Okay. <laughs> so do we continue the public hearing until next month? Yeah. Yeah. So I move that we continue the public hearing to the next meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we do we know the date of the next meeting by any chance? I'm sorry. Do we know the date of the next meeting? November fourth. November fourth. Okay. Thank what you. What the next the date? The next meeting is November fourth. November four. Okay. Um, the next item on our agenda is two fifty three Judson Avenue which is, would be a continuation of a public hearing for proposed demolition and replacement of single family home. But they're not here, are they? But I don't think there were no previous, there were no submissions and I think we were expecting a new submission. Was it a public hearing or did we open a public hearing? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, we did have a public hearing, but. So should we just continue that? Just I mean, continue, stays open, right? I, yeah, if does anybody want right, to speak right, about it? Or, if right. nobody's here, you ought to um, adjourn it till the next. Yeah, we'll do it. There's somebody here with their with their hand raised. I'm not sure if it's for 253 Judson or did we skip over 18 Yeah, 18 Fairlawn was skipped. We have to go back. I'm sorry. No, we skipped over 18 Fairlawn. Fairlawn. Oh. That was number three. Oh, sorry about that. But it's a public hearing. I don't know if you all have anything more that no. you want to see. say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we continue the public hearing to the next meeting for 253 Judson. Yes. Right. Okay. Second. Second. Third. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. All right. Now we'll do item number three, 18 Fairlawn Avenue, continuation of public hearing for proposed new in-ground pool and raised spa. Is there somebody here? Good night. Good night. Michael, can you hear us? Michael, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Are you for 18 Fairlawn? Well, I was here for 253 Judson, but. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I, I thought we were, uh, you know, like we said in our letter, uh, we were working with Christina Griffin and her team concerning um, a lot of the the uh, already proposed issues and uh, we're gonna be addressing the trees, the architectural context and conforming to the new zoning uh, guidelines. And I, I thought we were gonna hear some feedback um, about the, the visit that was uh, held um, this last uh, two weeks, two weeks ago or a week, a week and a half ago. Thank you. There was a letter uh, submitted by the village's consulting landscape um, architect who um, you met when we had the visit. Um, and that letter is available on the village's website. I don't think I need to like should read it now, but basically okay. it the 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 it seems like the big issue or now is to have a consult, well, you were there, so you heard, yeah. to have a yeah. consulting uh, arborist come and, you know, someone who's not looking to get hired to do the work, but somebody who can give us an independent opinion about the species of trees, their health, and things that could be done to mitigate whatever the impact is of the new construction. Great. Um, so I spoke to Susan Jane Schild, um, my landscape architect that spoke to uh, Suzanne and they uh, got together to choose an arborist. And I think uh, the, the appointment is on Thursday, Thursday morning. So they're gonna meet on, on site and take care of that. So that's happening on Thursday morning, this Thursday, uh, next Thursday? No, the, next, the, following to the following Thursday. Well, A yeah, the next Thursday, today is Thursday. A week from today. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, do you know what time? 
Um, hold on, let me check. I think it was yeah. 10 30. Okay, because I think I'd like to be there if I, if I can. I'll let this up the screen. Sure. So. Yeah, very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, are we done with Judson so we can go back to Fairlawn? <laughs> <I think so. laughs> All right. Item number three, 18 Fairlawn Avenue, continuation of public hearing for proposed new in-ground pool and race spa. So I move that we open the public hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone here or online or anywhere that wants to, to speak to this? 18 Fairlawn Avenue. Maybe I'll just read the resolution. <laughs> This what? Good evening. Can you hear me now? Good evening, everyone. I I, just, uh, I can't hear anybody yet. Uh, yes, we hear you. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm Perfect. Sure. No, well, my name is Abdulaziz Yusuf from uh, Hudson Engineering. Uh, I'm presenting uh, in place for uh, Casey Furlong. I'm just going to share my screen. This is the one with the pool right between the building and Oak Street. Not the one with the bigger tank. That's the other one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a pool that's right on the road. It's weird. Between two streets. It's very strange, but anyway. So, this board asked uh, for a resolution, um, a draft resolution. So, you had that as part of your packets. And I believe Anthony had a few more comments on this uh, project that. Yeah, we, we issued a memo, um, right. which I sent out this afternoon. So, I'm yeah. Gonna... Okay. Um, we received the memo and um, we, our office is currently in the process of addressing them. I, I think. What we're going to be doing is trying to get more information as regarding regarding the uh, existing uh, um, drainage system. Um, can everyone see my screen? Yeah. So basically, as far as compared to the previous plan, we basically moved the because uh, a lot of the comments uh, that we the memo we received were engineering uh, comments. So we try to address them by moving the. Uh, drainage system from this side to here because there are possible Coltec chambers. Um, however, again, we did this with the uh, updated survey we had, but what we're going to do is try to get more information um, either from the uh, previously approved stormwater system or doing a more extensive survey, you know, get a better idea of what's happening in the site. Street. And obviously we're going to uh, discuss this with Ms. Oliveri um, um, just to, to get everything moving. Yeah, our main concern is uh, there's an it's as we suspected there was an existing uh, infiltration system and it's shown there kind of schematically, you know, within the footprint of the pool and it just says to relocate. So um, we think they need to look at it in more detail. It might make a lot of sense to combine the two systems, and you can right. see the, the 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 place they have it located right now is kind of between the, you know, by the spa and the pool right against those two structures. structures there. I'm not sure that's the best way to do this. Um, so I think that needs to be looked at in more detail. Yes, and, and we will do that. I mean, because there's no, it's not a lot of room, we did propose, you know, impermeable barrier to, I guess, protect the spa and the pool, um, you know, from, from the infiltration chambers. But we will look into this um, existing drainage system just to see if we could possibly combine them like that. Ms. Oliveri has that. Would you would you uh, recommend that we defer action until you're satisfied with this? Uh... Um, it kind of depends on what the existing system 
is and what it looks like. I mean, they, they're showing a size there that doesn't look that large, you know, so it's feasible that it could be reconfigured or incorporated into the proposed system. Yeah. Uh, if it is much larger, it could change the layout. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, personally, I have no issue dealing with this, um, you know, later during a, you know, building permit issuance time frame if that's what the board wants to do. But um, there's really not enough information here to tell you if it's going to work this way, well, as far as the storm drainage goes. Yeah. Well, we're sort of out of the swimming pool season anyway, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's been, yeah, timing may not be. Maybe, maybe not the, the spa. I don't well, know. I don't know about the spa. <laughs> well, my concern would be just that it's a very tight design. And I'm a little concerned that there is going to be challenges in fitting it all in. Yeah. I mean, if, if it was me, I don't know that I'd want to do an infiltration system, you know, directly outside the wall of the pool. Yeah. You know, the pool, uh, I mean, usually you equip a pool with a hydrostatic relief valve for groundwater. So now we're putting a, you know, a drywall system right next to it. They're, they're doing an impermeable uh, barrier, but, you know, you're getting water into the, you know, recharging the ground there. So I, right. I, personally, I think if they, they, you know, look at putting everything on the right side and combining it, that could be a better setup and more efficient and do an overflow right out to the cash base in, in the street. It would be a little a little better configuration, uh, you know, from, from, from the way I see it anyway. Well, should, yeah, I agree. I, I think we I should, think we, we should, should make sure this engineering issue is yeah. resolved. Yeah. I think we're out of the pool season. So good. Well, then I would move that we continue the uh, public hearing in our next meeting. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda, item number four. Oh, yeah. No, we did four. Yeah. Item number five, 14 Bel Air Drive public hearing for proposed additions to, and site improvements to existing home. This is a, a public hearing. I would move that we open the public hearing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All right, that's a and this is the project with the garage that's part in Hastings and part in Dobbs. Is that correct? Yeah. Noah, can you hear us? I don't know why my son's name is on my Zoom, Zoom <laughs> program, but here I am. Um, so, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> I would be happy to share my screen if we can do that. Um, and where is it? Um, bear with me, sorry. Is there an engineering memo regarding this? Yeah, there, there is. And um, essentially the memo is restating what we had in our first memo. And there were, there were a number of issues in terms of the drainage that um, we thought could be conditional. They were, they were relatively minor, just verifying some uh, sizing on the drywall they wanted to put in front of the garage. And there were some other issues we brought up on the, you know, uh, uh, sheeting and shoring that would be required when the garage is removed. Things that would be addressed with the, in the building department, uh, building permit stage. So you don't feel there's any reason we can't go forward with this based on them meeting those requirements? No, I was okay with it. We we actually did some emails back and forth at the last meeting, and uh, okay. um, I think we're we're good with good. the way it is. Okay. Uh, is public hearing? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak on this application? Fourteen Bel Air Drive way driveway. So I guess we're ready to close the public hearing. Uh, Jennifer's shaking her head. Hearing nobody. Okay. <laughs> Would that be a motion you made? I, I guess I'm making a motion. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Well, close public hearing. Favor. Aye. Good. Well, we do have a resolution. Okay, we're going to knock anything off. Which I will bring to the board. Uh, Dobbs Ferry Planning Board Resolution Granting Site Plan Approval for Property at 14 Bel Air Drive, whereas Lori and John Salerdi 
seek plan site plan approval to reconstruct the existing garage, add new stairs, and reconfigure the patios. The subject property is located 14 Bel Air Drive in a one family residential zone, whereas the project will result in the construction or expansion of a single family home. Residents on an approved lot is classified under State Environmental Quality Act um, as Type 2 action, whereas pursuant to several sections of the New York State uh, Municipal Law, um, Planning Board referred the application materials to the Westchester County Department of Planning for their review and comment, where we Planning Board conducted a duly noticed public hearing on October 2nd, 7, which time all those wishing to be heard were given an opportunity and the public hearing was closed on the 7th, on October 7. And whereas the planning board has carefully examined and considered the materials submitted by the applicant, you know, list the uh, uh, materials that we did consider and reviewed, the planning board reviewed and, and examined letters and reports by the consulting engineer and planner. And whereas all testimony provided the public hearing was carefully considered. And then the uh, Resolution goes on to say that we're familiar with the site. We conducted a review. We considered, among other things, other other uh, access, circulation, parking, and therefore, therefore, be it resolved, the Planning Board of the Village of Surrey determines that, based on the findings and reasoning set forth below, the F, the application for site plan approval is granted, subject to the following conditions. And it's number one, except as otherwise provided, all work shall be performed in strict, strict compliance with the plans submitted to the planning board and approved by the planning board. The following conditions must be met before the planning board chair may sign the approval site plan. It gives a, a language to be added. It's conditioned on the applicant re, receiving all approvals be required by other government approving agencies. The applicant must address to the full satisfaction of the village engineer, all outstanding stormwater, stormwater maintenance agreement and engineering issues raised in the hearings and documents. And finally, the applicant shall pay all, all outstanding consultant review and legal fees in connection with the planning board application. Force and effect, no portion of any approval by the planning board shall take effect until all conditions are met. The final site plan is signed by the Chair of the planning board and the final site plan is signed by the planning signed by the planning board has been filed by the land use officer. And it goes on to say within 180 days, the, re, the receiving approved of receiving approval of site plan, the applicant shall submit two paper copies and one electronic copies. Talks about landscaping, commencing work. No, no work may be commenced on any portion without first contact contacting the building inspector to ensure that all permits and approvals have been obtained and to establish a inspect, an inspection schedule. And finally, the issuance of certificate of occupancy, no certificate shall be issued until all improvements shown on the site plan are installed or a sufficient performance guarantee has been posted. I would make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. It's approved. Our next item, item number six is seven Fairlawn Avenue, public hearing on proposed exterior additions to existing home. Seven Fairlawn Avenue, I would uh, move that we open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Can you hear us? Hello, hi. Yes, I'm going to put the drawings up. And I think Christina is drawing, she's joining by Zoom as well. I don't see her yet. She's on her way back. <laughs> 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 well, I can, I can start until she joins yeah. us. If you want to go ahead and do that, because I, I think um, 
at the last meeting, you, you uh, the pre-conference, you had a, a preview of the drawings um, and this submission, um, the revisions include uh, responses to the, to the um, consultant memos. We've um, updated the landscaping plan with native plants. Um, we've supplied a, um, an electrical plan and um, we also have the civil engineering drawings. Um, we went before the ARB uh, about two weeks ago and, and received approval. And so these are some of the materials we reviewed with the ARB. But this is very similar to, um, to what we reviewed last, last month at last month's meeting. The design has pretty much stayed the same. We just have supplementar, supplementary materials. And, and remind the, remind us again, just in terms of zoning. Uh, I'm looking at the calculation sheet. Mm -hmm. It's uh, completely conforming. There's no yes. The uh, the the memo from um, the uh, the village planner confirmed it's it meets it meets Great. all the zoning requirements. It makes sense. Easier. And where are we with engineering? Is that are you satisfied? We when we had a few comments. You uh, re remember on these, and it's been happening on a couple of these. We, we haven't been getting the stormwater till the second submission, so we just looked at stormwater. We had a few comments, nothing too drastic or, or major. Um, similar to the last one, uh, it talks about an existing drywall system to relocate it with no detail. So uh, we, we've got to know what's happening with that with that system, I think. Um, I'm sure there's more room here than the last one. So yeah. there's a little more leeway as to what could happen there. But um, uh, we asked for some detail there. And then also there's a construction ramp that looked very narrow on one side. We kind of questioned if that could happen or not. Uh, more detail would need to be submitted uh, prior to a building permit, I think, in that stage it, it could be handled. but. Um, uh, in general, we were okay with the uh, with the sizing of the of the proposed system. We were fine with that. I mean, it seems like there's a lot more real estate here to do. It needs yeah. to be done. It yeah. just the details have to be ironed out. Is that are you comfortable yeah, with I that think statement? So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add that Hudson Engineering is here with us um, tonight. If if there are any questions, um, I did want to point out that this this construction ramp is actually existing um, because there was. Um, a, a construction project on on the site that was abandoned. So so this is actually an existing yeah, ramp so that we plan to use for this for this project. I guess one thing we would just we questioned is it wide enough because there's a set of stairs right next to it. So that's just uh, if you, if I mean obviously you could uh, bring you know a small maybe you can get a small bobcat down there with that um, possibly. You know. Yeah, maybe with a crane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be. But you know, we, you know, we actually met the contractor on site, and he felt um, he could do the excavation needed for the footings and the small, the small spa with a with a small excavator. Um, mm -hmm. he, he felt he felt that he could make use of that ramp that was there. And do you have anything to say about this, Mr. Manley? Uh, no, everything is fine zoning wise. Okay. It's all engineering from here. Yeah. 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 Remember the last meeting you, so it seems because of the danger of the road collapsing, et cetera, you, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd like to move it along, move yeah. it along. Yeah. 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 Unless anybody has any issues we haven't heard so far, I'm prepared to. Yeah. Me too. Support this. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, this is a public hearing. Is there anyone, uh, I don't think there's anybody in the room that wants to speak about it, but is there anyone on online? Okay. Okay. Well, then I would I would move that um, we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We do have a resolution. 
Would you be so kind as to read the resolution? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be very similar to the last one. So. <laughs> We're gonna, um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the person that's writing these resolutions. We'll make them a little shorter. <laughs> Uh, Village of Dobbsbury Planning Board Resolution granting site plan approval for the property at 7 Fairlawn Avenue. Uh, background, whereas Dan and Beth Fosner, the applicants seek site plan approval to construct a new porch, an outdoor room, an outdoor kitchen, plunge pool, and patio addition to an existing single family residence. The subject property is located at 7 Fairlawn Avenue. The project site is located in the one family residential six OF6 zoning district. Whereas the project will result in the construction or expansion of a single family residence on an approved lot and is classified under the site environmental quality, the state environmental quality review act, CEPRA, implementing regulations as a type two action in accordance with the long code. And whereas the pursuant and whereas pursuant to sections 239 L and M of the New York State General Municipal Law, the planning board referred the applicant application materials to the Westchester County Department of Planning for their review and comments. And whereas the planning board conducted a duly noticed public hearing on October 7, 2021, at which time all those wishing to be heard were given the opportunity to be heard and the public hearing was closed on October, October 7, 2021. And whereas the planning board has carefully examined and considered the materials submitted by the applicant in support of the project as follows. It's a long list of plans and other supporting materials. Whereas the planning board has also reviewed and examined letters, reports, and memorandum from the board's consulting engineer and planner. And whereas all testimony provided at the public hearing was carefully considered and the planning board deliberated in public on the applicant's request for approval of the project and planning board determination. Whereas the planning board is familiar with the project site and the general vicinity and has reviewed the application in accordance with chapter 300 zoning and land use of the village code. And whereas the planning board has conducted an extensive review of the applicant's proposal and finds that the applicant has satisfactorily addressed the criteria for granting section 300-52D of the village code, including some consistency with the village's local waterfront revitalization plan. And whereas the planning board considered amongst other things, traffic access, walkways, circulation and parking, stormwater, landscaping and screening, lighting, noise, natural and environmentally sensitive features, and whether the proposed project will exceed the capacities of existing municipal roads or utility services. And now, therefore, be it resolved, the Planning Board of the Village of Dobbs Ferry determines that based on the findings and the reasoning set forth below, the application for site plan approval is granted and subject to the following conditions. One, approved plans, except as otherwise provided herein, all work shall be performed in strict compliance with the plan submitted to the planning board and approved by the planning board as follows. Uh, there's another long list. Uh, the following conditions must be met before the planning board chair may sign the approved site plan, the final site plan. The following language shall be added to the plan. Approved subject to all regulations and conditions of October 7th, 2021 resolution of the planning board of the village of Dobbs Ferry, New York. Any change, eraser, modification, or revision of this plan absent reapproval from the planning board shall avoid this approval. B, the planning board's approval is conditioned upon applicant receiving all approvals required by other governmental approving agencies without material deviation from the approved plans. Evidence of compliance with conditions and any such approvals must be submitted to the village building departments. The application must address all of the uh, to the full satisfaction of the village engineer, all outstanding stormwater, stormwater maintenance agreement and engineering issues raised in the hearings and documents submitted to the board, including the October 6, 2021 engineering letter. D, the applicant shall pay all outstanding consultant review and legal fees in connection with, in connection with the planning board review of this application. Six, force and effect. No portion of any approval by the planning board shall take effect until one, all conditions are met. Two, the final site plan is signed by the chair of the planning board. And three, the final site plan signed by the planning board has been filed with the land use officer. Within 120, 180 days after re, uh, receiving approval of the site plan, with or without modifications, the applicant shall submit two paper copies and one electronic copy of the site plan to the board of trustees and or the planning board for stamping and signing. This time frame may, may be extended for a maximum of two 90-day periods. 
Landscaping, in accordance with 300-44, required landscaping improvements shall be installed prior to issuance of a certificate of occupancy for all structures. However, if the landscaping is not able to be installed prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued due to winter weather or other site limitations, the property owner shall post a financial guarantee for the improvements equal to 115% of the cost of improvements so that the certificate can be issued. Installation of all landscape improvements shall then be completed before June 30th of the following year. This guarantee shall be released upon acceptance by the village of the completed landscaping. Commencing work. No work shall be commenced on any portion of the site without first contacting the building inspector to ensure that all permits and approvals have been attained, obtained and to establish an inspection schedule. The project must adhere to all applicable state and village codes. Issuance of certificate of a certificate of occupancy. No certificate of occupancy shall be issued until improvements shown on the site plan are installed or a sufficient performance guarantee has been posted for improvements not yet, com yet completed. The performance guarantee shall be posted in accordance with the procedures specified in village law 7-725A or 7-730 as applicable. The amount and sufficiency of such performance guarantees shall be determined by the land use officer. The amount of such guarantees shall be in the form of 95% surety and 5% cash. I make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Just, um, just to let the board know, because um, I know uh, there's always a little joking on how long the resolutions are, but um, the background <laughs> itself um, actually lays out all the the, the your environmental review that you had to do the GML if that needs to go out the the fact that you actually had a public hearing and that you actually looked at particular plans and then it specifically notes that you did look at you know letters reports and also the public hearing comments and these are all important in case this ever gets challenged that you actually looked at and it establishes your record and then the planning board determination actually you have to specifically look at um, certain criteria within certain sections of your um, zoning code. And so those are identified. You have to find consistency to LWRP and your whole entire village is in the LWRP. So that has to be a finding of the board. And then lastly, is just your site conditions, which specifically identify your plans um, that you want the applicant or they, when they pull for the building permit, they have to adhere to. And then the file, the other conditions are ones that are actually in your code itself that I brought out so that the applicant understands that for some reason the building department asks for certain bonds or requires the escrows to be paid, et cetera. So just wanted to explain that to you. Right. Thank, so, you. Thank so, you. So in short, in short, all of those things have to be in the, in the resolution. I assume that the resolutions are published like online so as long as there is as long as that information is in there you don't have to read the resolution really you don't that's you could, big you news could, if you wanted to just in the interest of, of public information you know you could read the first paragraph which explains who the parties are and, and what the application is for and then skip down to the now therefore and, and i'm sure that we could even highlight for the for the board the important things that relate specific, specifically to that application, you know, they all need certificates of occupancy and they all need those other things that are listed in the code and it has to be in the, the, the resolution, but they don't all have to be read verbatim. So, no, that, so we could work, you, we could work to try to That's a key limit it, but uh, I would be correct that. that all of that has to be. <laughs> yeah. in. So as long as you, identi so, you, know, you can identify the resolution and, and where to find it publicly. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. now, now would be a good time to ask Steve, who's been on the planning board for 40 years, <laughs> how he feels about learning that he, uh, <laughs> yeah. the hundreds of rights wasting oh, that's, precious that's just me. his life <laughs> to have read yeah. hundreds of hours of... Uh, thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Let's do that. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Good. Um, item number seven on our agenda. It's listed as vacant lot SBL 3.60-24-11. Continuation of pre-submission conference for proposed new house on vacant lot off Briary Road. Sorry, is this the Paper Street Access Project? Yeah, yeah, this is yes. gonna be exciting. Has there been any legal progress in that? There was a letter. Yeah, no, I've, 
I haven't seen anything on this application at all. I looked it, online no and backup. didn't see. I'm against this. So is there anything for us to do at this point? Uh, is the applicant on, available? I'm sure I want public comment tonight. Not, not if the applicant's not no. here. No, well, it's not a public hearing either. Oh, <laughs> that too. So, but you're, you're welcome to submit a letter and we will all read it. Um, I submitted something on the left side a um, couple of days ago. Yeah. You're, you're, I saw it. You live on Luzerne? Yes. Okay. Yes, we saw it. I saw it. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Um, oh, I actually would like maybe some clarification if that's possible. Well, I, again, I think the applicant should be here. I, I don't want to speak to the application oh, okay. at all unless right. they're here to hear it and okay. to respond. They may have issues okay. germane to their application. That, yeah. all right. That's fair. Wasn't, wasn't the applicant going to do some research and get back to us or something? I believe so, meeting? yes. Well, yeah. yeah, I think he's still working on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Because the applicant made me the day of what I submitted, um, you know, it comes back to some of the day of that. You know, the, uh, the resolution from 2005. Yeah. T typically, anything that would be submitted on the record would be delivered to the applicant as well. Okay. I don't know if that's been done, but it, so it should be. on the microphone? No, they're not on the microphone. But they're, it's not a public hearing, so we're in a quandary. <laughs> So, okay, so we'll move on. Item number eight, our last item, 20 Lyman Place. That was, that was this, wasn't it? Thank you. For no, no. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, that's a vacant lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is different. This I is, see. This this is, is, I misunderstood. This I apologize. Is a this building. lot's not vacant. This, this is not <laughs> vacant. This is a pre submission conference for proposed renovation and additions to existing one family residence, including a new porch and patio. Yeah, this, this, this is another different. Christina Griffin. Like an well, that makes sense. Okay. Suzanne and Christina. Yeah, hello again. Hi. Hello. I should have just kept you on. Look at that. Look at that. All right. Well, let's uh, again. Oh, there's Christina. She's here. Um, I'm going to pull up the drawings um, and we can just go, go through them. Okay, um, I'm Christina Griffin. I'm here with Suzanne Levine. Um, we're the architects for an addition and renovation to um, 20 Lyman Place. Um, what we're planning to do is to add, uh, expand the first floor by about 445 square feet. This is our site plan. And on the and in light blue here is showing the one-story addition we're planning to add, and we're also going to uh, extend the second floor, uh, which is a dark blue area uh, around the rear. Uh, we are planning also to expand the patio to the um, side of the house. And this patio will be uh, about 468 square feet of new um, impervious surfaces. Uh, in addition to those changes to the um, property, we're planning to add in addition to the front of the house, which will be the new entry, that's 57 square feet, and that has a new uh, walk and series of steps going down and, and connecting back into the existing steps um, at the street. We're planning to put a new fence that is going to be a few feet from the property line here that will wrap all the way around and close the property. Uh, to the right, you'll see our zoning um, chart. Uh, this addition meets the zoning code for the OF6 uh, zone in all respects and uh, lot coverage, setbacks, um, impervious surfaces. We have our coverage cal calculations here on the right. Uh, we should go to the next uh, slide, please. Uh, 
Sí, sí. Uh, this sheet is showing uh, photographs of the existing house. As you can see, it's a uh, it's like a one and a half story Cape Cod with dormers each side of a gable roof. Uh, and it has a very long um, staircase. We're planning to change that to make it safer and more comfortable. Um, so we're going to replace most of the stair and have groove it a different shape. Um, you'll see on the right is the pictures of the house, the where it exists right now. It's a very small house and um, the different additional square footage, it will have a much more comfortable layout. Uh, to the right here, we have a street view showing our uh, 20 Lyman Place uh, in the middle here, um, which has, um, you know, on each side of it, the houses are, are similar in size. Most of them are two-story houses with gable or hipped roofs. Uh, down below, Suzanne, please, um, can you move the sheet? Yeah. Yeah, and then down below are just photographs of neighboring properties. Which are all a similar um, two, and, two and one and a half story houses um, with different shaped roofs, but mostly gable roofs, clapboards, some stucco. Uh, and our uh, design is, um, is going to, our goal for our design is to have the house fit with the um, scale of the neighborhood, but maybe with a more of a modern feeling. Uh, next page. This is our, these are just our demolition plans. I'll just show you quickly. Uh, the addition is shown on the left and we're planning to open up the house so that we have a, a larger living room, dining room, kitchen on the first floor, new entry in the front. On the second floor, we're going to take out walls so that we can reconfigure that floor and create two uh, comfortable bedrooms, one larger master. We're going to keep the status of the three bedrooms uh, in the house, but in uh, but larger bedrooms. Um, next sheet is first floor plan. This is showing our addition on the left, which is, uh, oh, is the new living, dining, kitchen area that is uh, opening up to a patio that comes around the side of the house and links up with the existing patio in the back. Uh, the house on the right side is staying with some small changes and upgrade a uh, new entry in the front. Next plan, please. So our second floor plan, we're putting a small addition on this floor, but by doing that, we, we are able to renovate and uh, expand the bedrooms that exist and create a new master bedroom suite, master bath, master bath, hall bath. Next page, okay. These are our elevations. As you can see that we are retaining the original gable roof of the house and the the shed dormers on each side, but we're expanding the house to the left, um, having um, roof lines to tie in with the original house. Uh, and in the front, we have a new entry with steps coming down to the street. West elevation is showing the addition on the side with the large uh, sliding doors that open up onto the deck. Next slide, please. And these are our other elevations. This is the north elevation, which is actually the back of the house, back entry, and the other east elevation, which is an existing wall that we're going to renovate and, uh, and upgrade new siding, new windows. Good. Nice little house. Mm -hmm. Nice area. Good. And uh, I think tonight is to just to um, give you an idea, a general idea of the project. This is a, I guess, pre-submission, pre uh, pre-planning board submission. We have uh, already started the stormwater um, design for the project. Um, there has already been a test pit that has been made on site to do a PERC test and we should have the stormwater design for our next meeting. Okay. That's good, it sounds nice. I'm just curious, are those rocks sticking out there? <laughs> uh, is this all a ledge or is there any 
Is there any soil there? I mean, see, there's a, can you tell where as you it is? see from the photographs, there's a lot of lawn that kind of surrounds those rocks. So uh, that's good. <laughs> but uh, we know that is, is something we have to work with. We have to, the, the patio will probably hug the edge of the rock. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> work it into the design. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they'll find a place for to perk. Right, right. Grant's yes. not so That's, good at that. That was that question, right? <laughs> yeah. now, just, just a suggestion on, on, on these, you know, simpler residential ones like this, it would be a good idea if they, even though it's a pre-submission conference, to come in with the stormwater. Uh, because we're going to, again, we'll see the stormwater for the first time for the next submission. Right. And I don't know if the board's so inclined to move these things along more quickly, it's hard. But you're always going to have some comments on their submission hanging out there. So it's just a suggestion. Christina Griffin yes. does a lot of these. It, it would be good with these. If we, if we looked at the stormwater now, you can get that out of the way. You might be in a position at the next meeting to wrap it up. I don't know. but I, uh, I would hope to do that. Yeah, right. No, I know. So that's what I'm saying. You know, you'll likely um, have uh, engineering comments still hanging out there at the next meeting. You know, well, we should we call for a um, public hearing at the next I meeting. Want to, yeah, I want to call for a public hearing. I would move we have a public hearing. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Right. Thank Aye. you. I just like to reiterate. I I agree with Anthony. We have the short uh, short deadline for continuations. <laughs> basically for small changes to, uh, you know, comments from the board, but for something that's coming in for the first time, it should make it by the deadline, the actual calendar deadline. That's true. And you, you saw that on the last two, the stormwater came in you know, for the first time on those and we had, you know, just a couple of days really to look at it, you know, so right. we're, we're always going to find something that we don't agree with completely. <laughs> Uh, well, so that's your job. So the earlier, the better. And when it would, do you would need work the out with these. by then? Sorry? I just wanted to so confirm the deadline. The deadline for is the calendar deadline for our next meeting. So just look on the village website at the calendar. So it's not a continuation deadline. It's a the calendar deadline. Right. 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 Okay. The continuation okay. deadline is for small changes from okay. comments. I see. Okay. Thank you. Good. Understood. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night to you. Good night. I move we adjourn. Second. Me too. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye.